So welcome back. We have been looking at first order logic and we have been looking at the resolution refutation method and then we moved on to the resolution refutation method using equality and we saw that there were certain things that you could show in first order logic with equality which you could not show without the axioms, equality axioms that we had seen. We want to come back to that. But before that, I want to come to uh, a puzzle or a quiz or a story, uh, something which uh, is one of my favorite stories. So let me pose it to you. I will pose this question and you must think about it and come back with an answer. So here is the story first. Read this carefully. A father and his son were crossing the road when they met with an accident. The father died on the spot unfortunately and the son was rushed to the hospital and into the operation theater. But the surgeon had one look at the boy and said, I cannot operate on this boy, he is my son. A small simple story. It has been a subject of uh, experimental research among psychologists. The question we want to ask is who was the surgeon? So, I will also start with this question with you and uh, wait for you to come up with an answer. So, you can pause this video and come back with an answer uh, and then we will proceed from there to see whether you have figured out the right answer or not. But do look at this question, read it carefully and try to answer the question as to who was the surgeon essentially. So, I hope you had paused the video and now you have come back. So, the question was who was the surgeon? Now, some people find this to be a trivial question and its an answer is obvious to them essentially. But there are some who fail to arrive at the right answer even after some thought essentially. So, for the benefit of those who find it difficult to arrive at the right answer, we will answer this question using first order logic essentially. So, you would remember that when we started with first order logic and especially when we started with backward chaining, we said that we can ask existential queries essentially. So, this is an existential query, who was the surgeon essentially. So, we had said that time as you know, show that somebody is mortal or you know that kind of stuff. We said that uh, what logic can do is more than what databases can do. Databases can retrieve answers from a database from records which exist in the in the in the database deductive retrieval as we called it can retrieve answers which not only exist in the database as facts which is trivial in some sense except for the fact that the database may be huge uh, but also those which can be deduced from the database and that was deductive ret retrieval so here we are asking this question who was the surgeon and we want to know the answer so that let us put this in uh, first order logic. It took me some time to pose it in a neat fashion so that it could be done easily. So, maybe you can first have a go at how will you pose this in first order logic and what is the query, what is the facts and how will you derive it. What is the background knowledge? Of course, there is some background knowledge involved which I will show you here. Which pieces of background knowledge that you would want to so, so, we will look at representation a little bit later, but you know things like uh, if x is a child of y, then y is a parent of x. These kind of relations we can capture in logic, right. For, for all x, child x y is equivalent to parent y x. And then you know we can introduce other relations, mother, father, sister, brother and so on and you know come up with all kinds of relations 
we will come to we will do that exercise when we a little bit later but this is what we want to do because here the surgeon is saying he is my son so what do you infer from that essentially so we will use since we are working with first order logic with equality we will use uh, this logic so let's pose this so first of all we know that there was a surgeon this the surgeon uh, and the fact that we are using the means that we are talking about a specific individual and therefore we can give that individual a name uh, s and we can make a statement that s is a surgeon we can define a predicate son x y and we will read it as the son of x is y now that's one problem that you will encounter when you try to 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 pose problems in logic as to what is the meaning of son x y is x the son of y is y the son of x that can be confusing so we will read this as follows the son of x is y so x is a parent and y is the child we will use two function here m and f which will respectively stand for father and mother m for mother and f for father so m of y will stand for mother of y and f of y will stand for father of y remember that functions give us terms and terms point to elements in the domain essentially so mother of y is obviously some element in the domain father of y is also an element in the domain essentially we can add this piece of knowledge that you can either be the father or you can be the mother so if you say that y mother of y is x it's equivalent to saying that x is not the father of y i could have used the equality symbol here not equality symbol here. but anyway i hope that doesn't cause any confusion so we can add this piece of knowledge we can add it but as we will see it's not really required in the proof that we are interested so that's another thing when you are finding proofs you know you have lots and lots of uh, facts but you have to somehow pick the relevant facts and construct a proof essentially we will not even use the fact that s is a surgeon in the proof that we are constructing we can write this uh, as follows that if son of x is y then this is also true that x is mother of of y or x is father of y in fact it probably would have been better if i had used xor but then xor expands into a larger cnf formula or clause form formula so since i need only this part i have just used the or function here but as i have said here xor would probably be, be the more accurate representation of the fact that you are either the mother or you are the father you can't be both but this one says in some sense that you can be both when you convert this into clause form we get three clauses out of which we will only use the one which is there in red which says that your that son that the son son of x is y implies that x is the mother of y or x is the father of y we'll use that fact here but if when you convert it into clause form we will get this three clauses so you must do this exercise to verify that then the surgeon said this he is my son we will represent this as two things something which is implicit that the surgeon is alive so this comes from background knowledge that you know only dead people cannot speak so the surgeon must be alive so surgeon is alive and the surgeon says that that boy is my son so we had when we read this said the story we said 
a father and his son. So it was, you know, kind of some people. So just for the sake of this thing, I have used something like an SK uh, Skolem constant. It doesn't matter. You could have used a constant also. Uh, it doesn't change the meaning of the sentence. When you when you say uh, we are using a Skolem constant, it basically says that there existed a boy who was crossing the road and who met with an accident. But when we talk about the surgeon, we know that the surgeon came in and so we know which surgeon we are talking about. So in that sense, it makes sense to talk about the surgeon as a constant and the boy as a variable, existential variable and then convert it into a Skolem constant. In both cases, they are constants. We know that the father died, so that is uh, easy enough to represent. Dead, father of this boy essentially. So, we are talking about dead people and alive people, so we will also need to capture the relation between them that dead implies not alive and vice versa. Both that dead implies not alive and alive implies not dead can be represented using this simple clause which can be read either from left to right or, or right to left. So, dead y1 implies alive y1 or alive y1 implies dead y1 implies not alive y1 or alive y1 impl implies not dead y1. We will also need to use the equality axioms as we will see. Try doing this proof without uh, equality axioms. Try to add some more knowledge and, and do that. I spent about half a day working on this incidentally. So, maybe it might be worth your effort to also try it out. But eventually, we do need these equality axioms and this is how this, these are the ones that we will use. So, everything that you see in red is what we are going to use in the proof. What is this equality axiom? This is the substitution axiom which says that x1 equal to x2 implies alive x1 is equivalent to alive x2, which when we converted to clause form became like this. Maybe you should do that explicitly and validate that this is indeed the case. So, here we are. These are the facts that we will use. The answer has been revealed on the top, which would have been clear to most people, but it was not clear to some. So, that is why we had to do all this formal procedure. The mother of the boy was a surgeon. So, let us prove that. What is given to us? The surgeon says that that boy is my son. We know that the surgeon is alive because the surgeon said something and we know that the father of that boy is dead essentially. So, from this facts and with the equality axioms which are standard in first order logic with equality, we should be able to show that uh, the surgeon was the or S, remember S is the surgeon in this case, was the mother of the boy. So, first we infer that uh, the boy's father was not alive. That can be done using this fact that we know that dead people are not alive and alive people are not dead. Then we can use the substitution uh, axiom to conclude that either S was the mother of the boy or S was the father of the boy because that is what we understood to be the meaning of son essentially. So, we know that S is either the mother or the father.
Now we use the substitution axiom. So now we are using the substitution axiom. The, uh, the earlier axiom was not that was the um, domain knowledge that son means either mother or father. This one is the substitution action axiom we are using. So from this we can infer that we know that the father of the boy is not alive. So we can cancel it with this alive x2 in the resolution method and the other two will go forward. So x alive x1 not alive x1 will remain like that and instead of x2 we will get father of the son. So that is our good old resolution rule. Then we can match it with the fact that the surgeon is alive and we can cancel this in the clause with alive x. So now we get the fact that surgeon is not the father of the son. You can see that this is pretty logical essentially. The father of the son is dead, the surgeon is alive, the surgeon is cannot be the father of the son. Then we use the symmetry axiom because we want to be able to cancel the fact that S is not the father of the son with the fact that S is equal to the father of the son. So the, the clause here said that either S is the mother of the son or X is the father of the son. We know that S is not the father of the son. So we have written this here as S is not the father of the son. But to match this, again we have to use the symmetry, we have to flip it by bringing father of the son to the left and S to the right. So that now we can you know match these two together. They have the same pattern except that negation sign essentially. So we do that and there we have our answer, S is the mother of the son. As I said, pretty obvious to most people, but if someone refuses to believe it, then you can produce this proof essentially. And of course, if you are doing the resolution refutation method, you would have taken the negation of the goal that you want to produce. Uh, and produce the null clause essentially. So what this illustrates, these two examples that we have seen is that the equality axioms are necessary if you want to exploit the properties of equality which, which says that if two terms are equal, uh, if T1 equal to T2 then T2 equal to T1 also is true and that kind of stuff essentially. More importantly, transitivity and uh, the substitution axioms can be used effectively. Okay, so I hope you are convinced that the story was consistent and uh, we will talk about consistency a little bit in the next video. Mm -hmm.